On November the 16th, Arbor Realty Trust's price fell 8.72%. For a while, it was down more than 12%. The reason? We believe Arbor is a donor. Zero dollars, zero cents. Those aren't my words, that's a quote from Viceroy Research's 29-page short report that viciously attacks Arbor. If you're an Arbor investor, like me, or you're just curious to see the tactics these short reports use to manipulate a stock, I'll give you my take on this report and who's behind it. But this video wasn't actually planned and my studio is unavailable today, so I'm using a virtual backdrop. Okay, onto the report. This is the second time this has happened in the last 12 months. Last time it was a report by Ninji Research back in March. The report caused the stock price to fall. A number of people, including myself, published content saying that the report was, well, pretty much garbage. And after a couple of months, the price recovered and then actually reached new highs. How does this one compare? Well, let's dive into some of the highlights or lowlights, as the case may be. The title is Slumlord Millionaires. That's a clue that there'll be more emphasis on mudslinging than actual financial analysis. The opening statement paints a dark picture. Arbor's high-risk multifamily residential bridge loans, which comprise substantially all of its asset book, are going bad fast. They cannot be refinanced. The end is near. It's true that Arbor is in the bridge loan business, specifically bridge loans for multifamily residential, aka apartments. These are short-term loans, usually two to three years, that bridge the gap between acquisition and the cheaper permanent financing. Are bridge loans inherently risky? No, just like any other loan. If you lend to the right borrower and secure the loan with enough collateral, the risk is manageable. Substantially all of its asset book? Well, that's not true. Arbor is a bit more diversified than that. The balance sheet loans shown in green are bridge loans, but you can't ignore the agency loans shown in blue. Those are 10-year loans, not bridge loans. Then there's over $100 million revenue from mortgage servicing rights and another $100 million plus from interest on cash and escrow. At no point are these mentioned in the report. The introduction concludes with, there is no rate cut large enough no rate caps cheap enough, and no investor dumb enough to save Arbor. Putting aside the grammatical error, and there are plenty of those in this document, this is the kind of sweeping emotional language that the author uses to create concern without actually proving anything. At the bottom of this page is a table showing the change in debt service coverage ratio for a hypothetical investment, which is a fancy way of saying they just made up some numbers and put them in a box. By the way, if you're new to this channel, the videos are usually more positive than this one. Since retiring in 2017, I began researching my investments in far greater depth because now they pay for everything. I focus on stocks and funds paying a consistent yield of 8% or more, including Arbor Realty Trust. Thanks to this short report, it's actually currently yielding 14%. The report goes on to explain how higher interest rates create challenges for borrowers and that's True. To fund the loans, Arbor uses Collateralized Loan Obligations, or CLO. Viceroy claims that they've analyzed all of them. What they don't mention is that CLOs only make up half of Arbor's capital structure. No mention of the rest of their diversified structure in this report. Then there are some tables that claim that the properties against which the loans were made are overvalued. That claim is important, and if this was actual research, it would be verified with a credible source document. We need to see something like loan documents, or at least data from a credible independent source that shows how these loans were underwritten. At a more basic level, we need source documents to show that the properties discussed in this report, and there are quite a few, actually borrowed funds from Arbor. I checked every table in this report, no source. They claim they bought data from TREP, but they don't share those documents. I checked every hyperlink in the footnotes. They all lead to maps and news articles about dilapidated apartments, but not to a source document linking Arbor to loans or properties, except for one term sheet. Then Viceroy boldly claims, don't believe us. We've posted the entire CLO underlying assets in a spreadsheet for you to channel check yourselves. We'll come back to that spreadsheet and the term sheet shortly. The report begins trashing a series of borrowers and properties. They talk about gurus that borrow money to buy dilapidated apartments. About half the report is spent talking about rats, cockroaches, fires, and other stories of squalor. 
Arbor doesn't own or operate these properties, they're just a lender. The only things that are relevant to Arbor are number one, are the loans paid on time? And number two, if not, how much of the potential loss can they recover by either renegotiating the loan or foreclosing and then liquidating the collateral? Both of these topics are covered in Arbor's 10K filings and earning calls in some detail. And more importantly, as a publicly traded company, Arbor is legally required to provide accurate data on these matters. On the other hand, Viceroy has zero accountability to provide accurate data. In fact, their disclaimer specifically states that the report expresses their opinions, not statements of fact. Additionally, it says they stand to realize monetary gains in the event that the price declines. That's a heck of a business model. The ability to profit from bad news with zero accountability. That's quite the incentive to spread nothing but bad news. So what about the two documents that are supposed to verify their claims that I mentioned a little bit earlier? Here's the first one. It's a term sheet that outlines an offering to invest in a pool of loans. If you look through the properties, they don't look like the buildings in the Viceroy report. They look like very desirable buildings. Most have nothing to do with Arbor, but buried on page 62, I found Arbor Realty SR, and they're a subsidiary of Arbor Realty Trust. Three properties, and they all look, well, really nice. I didn't see any red flags in the financials. The data looked a little bit old, so I checked the date for the term sheet, and it's April 2019, and that, that's really old. If these were three-year bridge loans, they've long been paid off and this document is completely irrelevant. I don't even know why they link to it. How about the spreadsheet? Remember, don't believe us? Check the spreadsheet. Here's the spreadsheet. Viceroy wrote 309 addresses on a spreadsheet. That's not a credible independent source of data. I won't bore you with all the weird and wacky statements in the report. I think you get the gist. So let's cut to the conclusion. The business of multifamily residential investments is no longer economically viable. That's a shame for the roughly 40 million people living in multifamily units. If nobody wants to own these units, I guess they'll just have to go out and buy houses. Excuse my sarcasm, but multifamily residential isn't going away. With rising interest rates, the default rate will increase, but it's not like interest rates are at a record high. They've been this high before and it wasn't the end of the world. But it will be survival of the fittest for these borrowers. Poorly underwritten loans will lead to some defaults and well-capitalized investors will come in and buy those properties at a discount and then take out loans with lenders like Arbor. Who wrote the report? Well, there's no author name or signature, presumably somebody who works for Viceroy or maybe someone contracted by Viceroy. So who's Viceroy? I looked for the photos and bios of the key executives on the about page, but there's only mention of their first name, which is a bit odd. A quick scan of Wikipedia shows their troubled past though. They racked up millions of dollars in fines in various countries, including the SEC in the United States and regulatory authorities in Germany, the UK and South Africa. And what were they fined for? Releasing reports containing false and misleading statements. Shocker. I think Arbor Realty was targeted initially by Ninji because its business and its financial statements are pretty complex. It worked back in March, so now Viceroy is trying to make a buck, and they've probably already made a pretty tidy sum on this. These reports make accusations that would be complicated and really time-consuming to refute. I think the intent is to confuse retail investors with a bunch of charts, tables, and accounting jargon. They don't need to actually prove anything, they just need to stoke fear for long enough to close out their short trade. I'm guessing they could produce a PDF like this for less than $50,000, and profit from the short selling to the tune of potentially millions. The next two or three quarters will be challenging for mortgage REITs, including Arbor. As an investor, I'd like to read an analysis of Arbor's loans and their exposure and the likely outcome, but unfortunately, I don't find this document to be credible, so it won't cause me to sell my ABR shares. If you'd like to learn how ABR makes money, check out this review of their business model. That wraps it up for this look at a short seller report. More armchair income coming soon.